Miller is my third child and when he was first born I kind of wondered what was going on with him because he cried 20 hours a day. He wouldn't sleep more than 45 minutes at a time. At first it was the reflux diagnosis and then it was this and then it was that and we couldn't figure out how to get him eat, to eat well or to gain weight. We started figuring out that he was behind developmentally and you know third child maybe he'll just catch up later and I think finally by the time he was nine months old we knew that something was different about Miller. He had something called Angelman syndrome. It really shifted our world to know that we would have a child who would grow into an adult that would never be able to care for himself independently, who would most likely suffer from seizures and would require lifelong care. It was a lot. That diagnosis was hard. Because we have a paternal and a maternal, a father and a mother chromosome that work together to create our bodies, that paternal chromosome 15 is there. So the UBE3A is present on the paternal side, but to create Angelman syndrome, it's only turned off or it's missing or it's mutated on the mother's side. So if they could find just some way to get the body to recognize that we could turn that father's side on, you could potentially cure it. Me being the stepdad to Miller, I've kind of adopted this. I love the support that the community gives to each other. And it's a massive community out there that help each other out. It's a big, vigorous group of mama and daddy bears that um, really get us through the day to day of, well, how did you guys handle this? What worked for you? What medications worked for you? What sleep environment? How do you get them to stop doing this? Or how can you help with these behaviors? How did you um, learn to communicate? How did you teach your child to communicate? What should I be telling my speech and language therapist about my son's needs? And without the Angelman community, I don't know that we would be thriving like we are today. The things that are hardest for us on a day-to-day -day basis, I think, is that we can't communicate very easily. I can't ask him if he had a good day at school, if he was picked on at school, if he was bullied, even what his favorite foods are. I don't know. He can't really understand you that well, and you can't understand him, so it's it's kind of a lose-lose situation because you don't know what he's trying to get, and he doesn't know what you're trying to do for him. So. We've had to work through a way to meaningfully communicate with him and still there are just some limitations and I long for a cure so that I can really know what's in his mind and what's in his heart and I look forward to really connecting with him in that way someday when they find a cure. Another thing that's challenging for us is Miller's safety. So even as an adult, he'll never understand that running across the street is not safe. Children with Angelman syndrome and adults with Angelman syndrome don't really develop the ability to be safe in certain situations. With Miller, sleep is really crucial. Not only is it important for his growth and development, if he doesn't sleep or when he doesn't sleep, then it actually lowers his seizure threshold and makes it more likely that he will have seizures, which can be dangerous and life-threatening. So his sleep is really, really critical. We as a family have decided that Miller's disability isn't going to limit us and our adventures that we have as a family. So every year we go to um, a national park and we have fun camping adventures, which as I'm sure you can imagine can be a little bit challenging with Miller, um, but we've adapted and we've found ways to camp with him safely. Things like an enclosed safety bed are really critical to all of us being able to get sleep. He is sometimes pretty helpful. I really like saying to people that I have an Angelman syndrome brother. I feel like it's really cool. It's also like, he's like super likable because, you know, he always just runs up to you like super happy.
happy. He likes to have fun with you. And I also just like his attitude and he he has a like a go for it attitude. What I love to see is past Miller's disability and seeing that I think he would be an engineer someday if we do find a cure or when we find a cure because he loves to see how things work. He's very much a toddler. There are very much things that he does that are very toddler-like. If a sibling leaves a door open, he will find out very quickly. Messy will find me. He always gets into my room and makes a mess. He comes into my room and stuff and he sometimes breaks some things. Oh yeah, when he comes into our room and messes stuff up because of the playfulness again. We just be fun. I just think of him as Miller. I just think about him as another brother that I have. 